welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time I'm going to talk about the evolving microprocessor marketplace. For many years this was dominated by Intel chips with an x86 instruction set architecture or ISA. However, today, whilst x86 remains the dominant ISA in desktop, laptop and server computers, most mobile and embedded devices have an ARM processor, with ARM also taking an increasing market share in desktop, laptop and server computers. Indeed, according to Tyrius Research, in 2024 between 250 and 300 million x86 processors were shipped, compared to 29 billion ARM processors. In addition, with the rise of AI, processing requirements are changing, with GPUs and MPUs becoming as important as CPUs. And so I thought we'd have a video all about the current state of play, how we got here and where we may be headed in the future. In 1971, Intel released the 4004, the world's first commercial microprocessor. Over the next decade, other companies entered the market, including AMD, Motorola, MOS Technology, NEC and Zilog. But in 1981, the IBM PC launched with an 8088 processor from Intel. The 8088 was a lower cost version of the 8086 processor which Intel had released in 1978. As part of the IBM PC's open architecture, Intel's x86 microprocessor family became the industry standard for personal and server computing. However, as a condition of using Intel x86 processors in its PC, IBM wanted to be able to obtain them from a second manufacturer. In February 1982, Intel therefore executed a technology exchange agreement with AMD, which allowed each company to become a second source manufacturer of patented semiconductor products developed by the other. Over the next quarter of a century, x86 processors dominated computing, with Wintel or Windows on Intel being the most common platform. In 2006, even Apple switched to Intel x86 processors in its desktop and laptop computers. However, by this time, mobile devices were becoming increasingly popular, and over 98% of cell phones had an ARM processor. In January 2007, Apple revolutionised the computing landscape when it announced its first iPhone. Intel had been approached to provide the iPhone's processor, but had declined due to its belief that the required mobile chip would not be profitable. The iPhone therefore launched with an ARM processor, which rapidly became the standard for almost all smartphones and tablets. Mobile devices required CPU designs primarily focused on energy efficiency rather than performance, and this had never been the mantra of x86 development. In the early days of microcomputing, Intel, AMD, Motorola and most other CPU manufacturers produced chips in their own fabrication plants. However today the fabulous model dominates, with most companies having their silicon made by a third party. In 2009 AMD spun off its manufacturing arm into a new company called Global Foundries. And so AMD no longer makes its own processors. Meanwhile, Nvidia is also fabulous and so also doesn't make its own chips. So far, ARM has licensed its architecture and CPU core designs to other companies and has not directly sold processors. Although in March 2025, ARM announced plans to sell its own chips, although production will be fabulous. Meanwhile, Intel does operate fabrication plants in which it makes most of its own processors, although some of its chips are made by other companies. And the other way around, Intel Foundry Services also manufactures silicon for third parties. 
The largest fabricator of microprocessors is the Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company, or TSMC. Indeed, following its launch in 1987, TSMC has grown to take over a 60% market share by revenue. Today, TSMC makes chips for over 500 companies, including microprocessors for AMD, Amazon, Apple, Broadcom, Google, Nvidia, and Qualcomm, as well as some processors for Intel. In recent years, the fabulous manufacturing model has been one of three things to reshape the microprocessor marketplace. The second has been the rise of the Open RISC V ISA, as I've discussed in many other videos, and which so far has only had a major impact in the embedded space. But the third factor has been the opportunity for companies to license the ARM architecture and ARM core CPU designs from ARM Limited. This has enabled companies to more rapidly develop their own chips. For example, by licensing the ARM architecture and using the fabulous manufacturing model, Apple created the M-series ARM processors at the heart of its current desktop and laptop computers. It's also not just Apple computers that are no longer based on x86 CPUs. Not least, in 2024, the first Copilot Plus laptops announced by Microsoft were based on ARM processors and specifically Snapdragon processors from Qualcomm. And as this trend continues, it's likely that an increasing minority of Windows laptops will have ARM rather than x86 CPUs. Today, the CPU marketplace can be segmented into embedded, mobile, desktop laptop, and server enterprise. By CPU volume, by far the biggest segment is embedded, which covers processors used in all manner of IoT and other devices, ranging from storage controllers to cars. In the embedded category, ARM is currently the dominant ISA with the Open RISC V standard now becoming a major competitor. Indeed, some reports suggest that RISC V has already reached 25% market penetration, with the vast majority of RISC V cores currently shipped being embedded. In mobile devices, ARM also dominates, although it may face competition from RISC V in the future. Meanwhile, x86 is still the most common architecture used in desktop and laptop computers. However, as already noted, Apple desktops and laptops now have ARM processors, as do a small, if increasing, minority of Windows laptops. Whilst we are a very long way from x86 ceasing to dominate desktop and laptop computing, things are changing far more rapidly in the enterprise space. In data centers, whilst most servers still have x86 processors, by mid-2025, an estimated 25% of new servers had an ARM processor, up from 15% a year earlier. And it's widely expected that x86 CPUs will continue to lose market share to ARM in the enterprise space. Two factors are driving the increasing use of ARM CPUs in data centers. The first is that large cloud computing providers want increasingly energy efficient chips designed for their own specific workloads. Amazon, Google, and Microsoft have therefore all created their own ARM processors, and these are increasingly being used in their cloud computing servers. First off the block, Amazon Web Services, or AWS, has developed a range of ARM server processors called Graviton. The first Graviton 1 chips were launched in November 2018, with the latest version being the Graviton 4. This 73 billion transistor ARM processor is being used by many AWS customers, including Epic, who use them to run their Fortnite game servers. Google announced its Axion ARM server processors in April 2024. Like Amazon's Graviton 4 chips, these are based on the ARM Neoverse V2 architecture. 
Google claims Axiom-based cloud servers deliver up to 50% better performance and up to 60% better energy efficiency than comparable current generation x86-based server instances. And today, Google Earth and the YouTube Ads platform are just some of the services being delivered from ARM-based Axiom servers. In May 2024, Microsoft also joined the party when it announced preview cloud instances based on its Azure Cobalt 100 ARM processor. In November 2025, Microsoft followed up by announcing its next generation Cobalt 200 ARM processor, which is based on the ARM Neoverse V3 architecture. According to Microsoft, Cobalt 200 is optimized for common customer workloads and delivers unique capabilities for its own cloud products. Already, the first Cobalt 200 servers are live in Microsoft data centers, with wider rollout and customer availability due in 2026. In addition to major cloud providers developing their own server chips, the rise of ARM in the data center is being driven by other companies installing new NVIDIA compute platforms. These include NVIDIA's GB300 NVL72, which is designed for AI workloads. The system has 36 ARM-based NVIDIA Grace CPUs, coupled with 72 NVIDIA Blackwell GPUs. NVIDIA first announced its Grace ARM processor in April 2021, with its Grace Superchip following in 2022. Both are again based on the ARM Neoverse V2 architecture, and in GB or Grace Blackwell systems have proved a popular choice for those seeking energy-efficient compute power for AI factories. So, what does all of this mean for today's major CPU manufacturers? Well, starting with Intel, the company clearly no longer dominates the entire market, with most computers now having an ARM processor. AMD also continues to increase its share of the x86 desktop, laptop and server market. This said, most desktop, laptop and server computers currently being shipped do still have Intel inside. Recent investments in Intel by NVIDIA and the US government have also given the company a much-needed financial boost. And alongside Samsung, Intel remains one of only two major CPU manufacturers who actually design and fabricate their own silicon. Turning to AMD, today the company is performing strongly and, as just mentioned, continues to take x86 market share from Intel in desktop, laptop and server. But the very long-term future of x86, at least in the data center, is uncertain. And there have been rumors that AMD will launch an ARM CPU. ARM itself is also a company in a strong financial position, and its reported intention to start selling its own server processors is a very interesting development. As we can see, Meta is reported to be its first customer, and indeed, in October, ARM and Meta announced the deepening of a strategic partnership to use ARM to power data center AI. Also in October, NVIDIA briefly became the first company to top a $5 trillion market valuation. Admittedly, this was a reflection of the AI bubble and in particular the value of NVIDIA's GPUs. Although, whilst NVIDIA may no longer be worth $5 trillion, it does remain the company and the processor manufacturer with the highest market valuation, as we can see in this data from late November 2025. Looking to the future, it seems certain that AI developments will continue to erode the value of intellectual property. And if this happens in the CPU marketplace, it will be those companies who physically manufacture microprocessors and who run them in their data centers who will dominate. This would be good for Intel, but does raise questions about the long-term value of companies that don't physically make their own processors or employ them to provide cloud services. 
or, in other words, in the long term, the cognitive act of designing a processor may no longer yield the significant market value that it generates today. In five years' time, my own prediction is that most new data center servers will have an ARM CPU. And I also expect RISC V and ARM to evenly share the embedded market segment. RISC V is also likely to be making its presence felt in the global mobile space. But x86 will still be the majority desktop and laptop ISA, if with ARM and RISC V chasing at its heels. If you want to know more, I've included links to everything I've covered in the video description. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.